party stands for, I guess, as far as social and moral issues go, but I guess deal with the fact that those social and moral issues are pushing a lot of voters away from our party. I think we've got to do a better job of educating people about fundamentals. And I, I talked to a group of students, the honors students out at Birmingham Southern um, back in 08, and something similar was asked, and, and, and I'm, I'll, I'll answer it like this. I'm not an expert on world religion. I've studied world religion, but I don't know what all of them believe. But I, I, I know this. The only one that I know of that believes that man was literally made in the image and likeness of God and endowed with his divine attributes is Judaism. And, and of course, Christianity believes that, but those two are inseparable. Now, there may be another religion somewhere in the world that believes that. If there is, I just don't know what it is, but I can tell you this without hesitation. There's not another country in the history of the world that believes that except this one, the United States. I know you're all lawyers, so you've all read the Declaration of Independence and you've read that second line, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Well, the first one's life. See, every other right presupposes life. You can't have liberty without life. Our founders understood that as a fundamental, that if you didn't get life right, it really didn't matter about the rest of it. And the technology today makes it irrefutable that it's a life. So every time we make that decision, and I know that there's some incredibly difficult decisions that have to be made, but every time you make that decision, it's about a life. And everything else is going to fall in line behind that. The other thing that I pointed out to those students is what unalienable means. And I know you all know that, but it means that those rights, it, it, they not only exist outside of government, they pre-exist government. Those rights are, cannot be taken from you legitimately. You can't even give them away. They're unalienable. And again, the first one's life. And then you read the rest of it, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that next little section is really critical because it tells you what the proper role of government is. And it's, and it's this. It's really this simple. And to secure these rights. Government's instituted among men, the just powers of which are derived from the consent of the governed. So I think we've got to get to the young people and, 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 and explain these foundational principles. And it starts with them understanding how critical it is that we protect life. Everything else follows after that. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Let's say uh, you do win the election. What would be the first thing you want to work on? First thing that I'll work on is uh, getting a substitute for the Affordable Care Act. If you're following the news, you realize that yesterday they announced that, that the rest of the mandates, I think the rest of them, have been postponed until after the 2016 election. Frankly, I think that's illegal. I think it, because the law is specific, there was very few specifics in the bill that passed, but the, among the, the specifics that were in were set deadlines. And there's nothing in the law that mitigates against those deadlines, and I think they've basically made it illegal. At the same time, I think there's, uh, the American public will not support anyone who doesn't have a plan for a replacement, and that'll be the first thing we do. The second thing that I want to do, or maybe the A and 1A, will be open up our energy resources. We have spent five years trying to get the Keystone Pipeline approved. It has an economic consequence and a geopolitical consequence. I don't know if you saw that the Chinese, after Putin sent the Russian troops into the Crimea, he and the Chinese premier got together. Now, whether, whether this administration or the Republicans in Congress or anybody else understand it, it's we're, we're in a Cold War again. The Chinese desperately need uh, energy resources. They're, all of their refineries are set up to process heavy crude, which is what the, the Canadian pipe, that pipeline will be delivering to the United States. It's either going to come to us or it's going to go to the Chinese. We ought to be in the position of determining how much of those resources go to China. And we're going to screw that up if we don't open up Keystone. 
That's the geopolitical consequence. The economic consequence is Keystone, if we open that up, is immediately 20,000 direct jobs and another 100,000 indirect. If we open up our permitting to what it was pre-BP spill and clear the backlog, that's another three to 400,000 jobs and another 45 billion to our GDP. So those are the two things that we got to do right away. And we're going to, and people ask about the debt, we're going to deal with the debt. This is one of the ways to deal with it. You're going to deal with the debt one of three ways or one or all three ways. You're going to inflate your way out of it. None of you want that. You can't afford it. You're going to tax your way out of it. You don't want that. Or you're going to grow your way out of it. I think that our primary way of, of reducing our debt is, to, is economic growth with controlled inflation, which we'll have anyway. So those are the first two things I'd do.